Do you think it is Apple specific? Is it simply the phone is so darn expensive and in a market like China where things are slowing in terms of at least the overall economy, it's going to, going to take a hit? Uh, I think the overall smartphone market in China has been difficult for much of the year. I think year to date through November, uh, China's smartphone demand was down 15 percent. And actually the, the data that, that we've seen has Apple down plus or minus commensurate with that. So through November anyway, it didn't look as though they were losing a ton of market share. Uh, that may have changed in December given uh, there was some talk of uh, iPhone boycott. So it's just a slowdown right, overall, but, not necessarily a move away from Apple in the marketplace itself. Uh, I think that is probably the, the bulk of the explanation. I think the magnitude of Apple's miss does suggest that there is more that has gone on in the month of December. Um, so we'll have to find out. Probably we'll have to wait until the end of January to, to hear. What are your thoughts, John? I think this isn't just China. David. Uh, and Tim Cook and Apple sort of alluded to that in uh, his, I guess, release letter to investors last night and also in his comments to Josh. I mean, the bulk of it is China, but there's also this piece he talked about how the subsidies not being there, basically price sensitivity in some developed markets was hurting them as well. And I think it's early to know exactly what's going on, but it's worth considering the possibility that Apple overplayed its hand with the iPhone 10 line and then continued with the 10s, 10s Max, and 10R, meaning that there was a certain segment of the iPhone user base that is really into the iPhone, has money, and was willing to upgrade. But then as that went into year two, what used to happen in the past was, well, then the slower adopters would come on and adopt the newer phone. They didn't do that in the same numbers this time. They stuck with their older phones. The replacement cycle lengthens. Uh, they don't want to do that upgrade. And so Apple's in this position in China, yes, of having a slowdown affecting them there, but possibly also in developed markets. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, I mean, they can talk all they want about the watch or about service revenues, which are significant, though this is still the engine that drives profitability at the company. Have you cut your numbers? What are your expectations for iPhone sales as a result of this warning? Well, first of all, I think John's exactly right about the pricing story and that Apple has been very uh, uh, clear to say in the past that they haven't run into any challenges with price elasticity. So I think this is the first time, really, that Apple has come out. And they didn't say it directly. They said it indirectly, John, as you were saying. Hey, look, you know, carrier subsidies are a big deal, even in, in developed markets. So that, that was a little bit of a change for them. Unfortunately, it's not something that they can easily shift because it'll take some time before they can adjust what their product roadmap looks like. So it's, it's not a near-term fix for them. I mean, bulls would say it looks like we're going to get a U.S.-China trade deal. And in fact, this puts more pressure on President Trump to have one of the biggest companies in the U.S. having to lower their expectations so much. Bears would say this actually speaks to some of those innovation concerns we had around not having the next new product beyond the iPhone, and the iPhone is really slowing. Which is it? Uh, those are uh, short-term and long-term variables, right? So in the near term, if trade disputes calm down, then yes, we can hope for a bit of improvement in China. But let's keep in mind that the overall China smartphone market isn't great. Um, so we shouldn't expect a, a, an enormous snapback in China. That brings us then to long term concerns about innovation. And I think I think that's right. I mean, I think it's fair to say that uh, the Amazon Echo should have been a product that Apple pioneered, right, because they were ahead with Siri. Um, but I, I also think that, look, we tend to lose sight of the watch because it is a much smaller piece of Apple's overall revenues. Um, but that has been an enormous success, and it beat our estimates again uh, for, for this quarter. John, what's your view on services? And, and I mean, if they're going to lose some revenue coming in from selling iPhones in China, can they make it up? with services in China. It's a very competitive landscape. Condensa, I've got my doubts, and the, and the reason is uh, the services business is driven somewhat by the installed base of Apple devices, and largely by the installed base of iPhones. I think it's unclear at this point. A Apple put out this number on how the installed base of active devices is up 100 million. I'm not sure that number matters to services as much as the installed base of active iPhones and the growth of that. Because if I got an iPhone, and then I get a watch and an Apple TV. Am I really going to spend that much more on services year after year? It's not clear yet. Maybe not. Maybe the iPhone itself 
when I buy that game, when I get Apple Care on it, et cetera, et cetera, Apple Music, is really when the spending comes in. I don't necessarily spend more as the others happen. But I want to go back to this issue of subsidies. Why did Carrier subsidize the iPhone in the first place? Because it was the absolute best salesman for 3G and 4G. Right? You build the network, you spend all this money as a carrier, then you got to get people to actually spend money on the network. How do you do that? Well, Apple was the absolute best at saying, look at what you can do with 3G on this phone. Look at what you can do with 4G on this phone. So now we got 5G coming. And the question is, can Apple build a phone for 5G that gets people excited about the networks where the carriers are willing to subsidize it and about the phone? And this fight with Qualcomm is front and center in that issue. How quickly is Apple going to deliver a 5G phone?